Okay, in my last presentation, I briefly talked about some of the general points of plotting. Let's now look at the scientific plotting. In particular, let's look at what kind of uh, plots we should have, what kind of axes we should use. The first and simplest is really the linear plot. And of course, this is so uh, straightforward that it really needs hardly any elaboration. For example, if you have a linear variation between an independent variable x and a dependent variable y, say y equal to mx plus b, you know that the best way to really see this data is on a linear, linear plot of y and y versus x and that will result in a straight line. Obviously, you can extract out the slope as well as the intercept from this plot and you can get both m and b. But it's interesting that you can actually use linear plots even when the relationship between the data is not a linear data. For example, let's look at this simple equation f proportional to 1 upon r squared. If you really plot f versus r, you would of course get this kind of a curve. And you can see that it's not very obvious from this curve what the relationship between f and r is except possibly that it's an inverse relationship. In such cases, it might be nice to actually plot f versus 1 upon r squared, transform your data r into 1 upon r squared. And then if you get a straight line, you can see right away that there is a correlation in fact that f is linearly dependent on 1 upon r squared. So it's always useful to transform your data in order to achieve a straight line because that straight line makes it clear how good the uh, relationship is and in fact what the relationship is. Uh, besides the linear plot, we also have the log plots. Of course, log scales are very important because they can capture a large range of a variable which is not easy to do on the linear plot, but it's much more than that. For example, let's say you have a function which goes as exponential of a variable t. So let's say, for example, n equal to n0 x a t. Semi-log plots are very nice to capture exponentials. And you can see that uh, here is the data set. And you can see that if I plot log of n versus the time t, you would get a straight line if it varies according to this. So it's very uh, easy to pick up exponential, arrhenius, those kinds of dependencies from an exponential plot. Here is again the same plot, but it's slightly different. It's again a semi-log plot. The difference is that here a log of that n has been taken and plotted on a linear scale, whereas here it's n itself which has been plotted on a semi-log scale. This is a preferred way of doing it and I'll explain in detail later in my full uh, talk to you why that is. If I look at log-log plots, similarly, log-log uh, plots are enable you to capture a large range of both the variables. And also, of course, you can see that if you had an equation which looks something like this, it's a power law equation. In fact, log-log plots capture the power law dependencies very well. If I were to plot y versus x on this uh, linear plot, it of course tells me what the general trend is. But all I can say is that it is not quite linear, it's probably sublinear, but more than that I can't say. Whereas if I plot log y versus log x, or better still, as I mentioned, y versus x on a log log scale, you would actually get a straight line. And the slope of that straight line would actually be the power b, and the power b is very easily obtained from this. In fact, you can very easily see from a log-log plot like this that indeed you have a, a power law relationship between the two variables. Uh, let me give you an example which I deal with uh, very often and that's the current voltage or IV characteristic of a solar cell. Here is an equation of a solar cell. You are all probably familiar with the diode equation of a simple diode equation. It's really I equal to I naught e to the power of QV by KT minus 1 
but since the minus 1 is often negligible, it is written as I naught e to the q v by k t. This is a simple diode equation and for example, here is the data which you might have got from a diode or a solar cell. The solar cell has actually a more complex equation in which you actually have two diode like equations. It is called the two diode uh, model of the solar cell in which essentially it looks as though there are two diodes operating in parallel and therefore, the currents add up. Let us look at it. Uh, I could plot the current voltage on a linear scale that is also done sometimes and the linear plot one nice thing about it is that it captures very uh, quickly and easily the exponential nature of the diode curve. You can see that nothing is happening and then suddenly it shoots up. However, you cannot get too much information out of a linear scale, but if you were to plot it on a semi log scale. So, here is the current plotted on a uh, semi log scale versus voltage now on a linear, uh, the current is on a log scale the voltage is on a linear scale. So, it is a semi log plot. You can see that from the semi log plot a lot of information emerges which it is not possible to see here. For example, you can find out that indeed there are two parts of the curve corresponding to the two models of the diode. You can easily extract out I naught, I 2 and the two factors N 1 and N 2 and again I will uh, touch upon that in more detail later. Another example which I would like to uh, focus on, again an example which I am particularly familiar with, but you will have many such examples in your field also, is the example of current flow in insulators. If I have an insulator and I apply a voltage to it, how much current flows? Typically, of course, the current is quite small, but even though small, I do have uh, some current flowing. And there are various mechanisms for current flow, tunneling and thermionic emission and so on and these are all listed here and you can work out theoretically what are the expected current versus voltage or current versus field relationship for all of these cases. Now, in a particular case, if I have taken data, I would like to know which is the uh, mechanism current flow mechanism which is actually operating for my case. How, what is the best way to do that? Well, here is a particular example which I found from the literature. Here is the current versus voltage, here is the experimental data and you can see it looks something like this, nothing much is happening and the current starts to increase, but I am really not sure what exactly is the uh, current flow mechanism. One thing which I can do if I look at this equation carefully, you can see that now if because it is there is an exponential, I can sort of see that because it is increasing rapidly, there is probably an exponential there, but what I can do is to plot J versus E squared, E is the voltage or the field, J upon V squared or J upon E squared, plot the log of that versus 1 upon E or 1 upon the field or 1 upon the voltage and that is exactly what is done here and this is a plot which is usually used to find out whether tunneling or fowler nordheim tunneling is the important mechanism. So, a plot of log of I upon V squared versus 1 upon V will give you a straight line. Again by looking at this straight line and how well the data fit to the straight line you can be much more convinced and also you can convince your readers much better that this is indeed what is happening in your case for your data. So, plotting a particular thing, a transformation as well as uh, on a semi log scale and trying to get the correct form of the equation to give you a straight line is very important. You can see that in this case actually the slope can give you from this important parameter the barrier height and that can be easily then calculated from the slope of this curve. I will also show you here some data which uh, one of my PhD thesis students had obtained. Here you can see that he is actually trying to find out 
whether it is Fowler Nordheim data or uh, Fowler Nordheim model or one of the other models which is operating. And what it is possible to do is not to plot the transformation, but however, just to plot log j versus the voltage or the field. And that is done here and you can see in this case of course, the temperature has also been varied and you can see that you have a whole lot of data and you try to find out by fitting an ideal fowler nordheim model or an ideal pool frankel model or an ideal gttt model etc try and see which is the best model fit now this is possible but really i would ideally prefer that it is plotted to obtain a straight line here you don't have straight lines and you can see that the ability to make the data fit to the model is not as easy as it was in the previous case. Uh, in this case, of course, colors have been used, which is very good. But as I will also explain to you later, the choice of colors could have been a better. So, uh, this is uh, briefly what I would like to tell you. I will give you a lot more examples in my full talk, where we will explore various ways of plotting different things and also to see how you can extract the best information out of this. And uh, furthermore, we will also look at some one or two ways in which you can actually see where the data is not fitting very well and how it might really lead you to find out something new about a model which you did not know before you started using these plots and plotting your data. Okay, thank you.